Hey everybody, welcome to Move to Combat. I'm James and here are your hosts, Haley. Hey, what's up you guys? And Kenny. Hi. If you have comments, feel free to make them throughout the show and I will try to read all of them on the air that I can. Haley, what are we talking about today? Uh, today we did some deck techs uh, for Commander using the new legendary creatures from War of the Spark. Cool. It was actually a lot of fun. I need you to curb your enthusiasm, Kenny. Once again, <laughs> once again, we're starting at a zero. Good start, good start. I uh, just have to be excited. doubly enthusiastic. I was excited. So, yeah. Kenny and I each picked our favorite legendary creature from War of the Spark, and we built commander decks for them. We're going to give you guys a rundown of those. And then, additionally, at the end, we have a couple more notable guys that we're not really going to go through, but that we think would be cool to build around. Yeah! All right, cool. So you want to get the presentation started? The presentation? Oh, presentation. Get all professional and prepared yeah. today. I know. It's, it's, it's a whole whole new world. A whole new world. <laughs> all right, so uh, who's, who's, who had Feather? That would be me. That's me. Kenny's deck tech. Yeah, so Feather's really cool because you get to get things back after you use them. Uh, just being able it, in but red more specifically, more specifically and sorcery yeah. is not just like anything you want. Well, of course, I was gonna read the card. Okay, <laughs> so Feather the Redeemed is a legendary angel for a red and two white. You get a three four flyer, and that says whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, you exile that card instead of putting it into the graveyard, and then as it resolves, and if you do, you return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So any pumps or any effects that you do on your turn that targets a creature, you exile it instead of uh, you exile a spell instead of putting it in the graveyard, and then at the end of the turn you get all of those spells back. That sounds annoying. Which is really cool in red white. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I've never seen like a spell slinger type of commander for Boros before. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's pretty cool. I Boros actually might try to make this. Boros is typically pretty one note, so this kind of adds. A note and a half. It makes Boros a little so, tricky. Now, Boros is a note and a half, and not just one note. Oh. Oh. I'd say it's two notes. Mm, we'll I, see. I, I think Convince me, Kenny. Okay. That'll All be right. really easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the main things that I wanted to run with Feather was Sunforger, which is a three-mana equipment that the equipped creature gets plus four, plus zero, and then you can play a red and white to unattach some Sunforger, to search your library for a red or white instant, instant card with converted mana cost four or less, and then cast that card without paying its co mana cost, and then shuffle your library. So it with Feather, if a lot of your spells are targeting cre creatures you control, it's effectively just finding you a card that you keep getting back. This is what I meant by one note, because <laughs> I've seen Boros decks just use Sunforger and just do the same thing constantly over and over and over again, and, you know... Just yeah, but then then you get to run cards like Oblation, where you can talk a creature you control, like a token or something, or someone or an op opponent's creature, and then that per that creature's or permanent's controller uh, shuffles them to the into their library, and they draw two cards. So if you target a token you control, you get Oblation back, and you get two cards out of it. Then there's cards like Bathe in Light, which has Radiance, which is a keyword from a long time ago, from like the first set of Ravnica. That says uh, you choose a color. Or, or Radiant says um, it affects all creatures that share a color with the creature you're targeting. So since the deck is entirely red white, uh, if you target Feather with it or another red white creature, you're targeting all of your creatures in play. Radiant Bathe and Light specifically uh, lets you choose a color, and then all the creatures that share a color with the creature targeted get protection from that color. <laughs> Stupid. So, like, if a blasphemous act goes off, you'd be like, "Cool, all my guys have protection from that color, so they don't take damage." How did you know? That's what I played. <laughs> and then, like, Boros Charm is in all Boros decks. It's a staple. It's it, it's uh, two mana instant speed that deals four damage, gives uh, all of your permanents in indestructible till end of turn, or target creature gains double strike until end of turn. And then Soul's Fire and Impact Resonance are really similar. Impact Resonance is an instant that's set for two mana. You can It deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures, where X is the greatest number of damage dealt by a source to a permanent or player this turn. So if someone throws out like a huge combat um, to an opponent, you could be... 
<laughs> you could say, uh, cool, thanks for dealing a bajillion damage to my opponent now. Deal that much damage uh, divided as I choose among your creatures. Which allows you to kind of sweep. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got Miss Veil Plane sitting over there, which, which yeah. does its thing. It puts cards back into your deck from your graveyard, so you can tutor up a card that wouldn't necessarily uh, target a creature you control, and then just put it back in your deck to tutor up again. So, shenanigans indeed. Interesting way to start off. That's that's a lot of cool stuff you can get with Sunforger, but I'm still not entirely convinced that this is not one note, Kenny. <laughs> okay, well, I may have also checked out a couple different synergies with, uh, your, or other cool synergies, just generally. Um, seize the day is great. You target, like, Feather. And you get another combat, and then you get Seize the Day back, so you can just keep doing it. Because uh, you get an additional main phase after Seize the Day. So when your turn ends, <laughs> you move on to the next turn, and you get Seize the Day back. Spark of Creativity just kind of lets you draw cards. Uh, you don't actually have to deal damage to anything. You just play the card that you exiled off the top. <laughs> uh, Chandra's Ignition is a sweeper that you keep getting back because you're targeting a creature you control. Fiery Gambit is really interesting. You flip coins, which is fun. Super cool mechanic. <laughs> like, you want to leave things up to chance. That's how you leave things yeah, up to chance. But it does everything on the card. So if you were to... Uh, you flip until you lose, and or until you stop flipping, and you get uh, a, a number of effects equal to how many coins that you flip. So if you flip one, heads, you get nothing. If you flip two, you deal three damage to target creature... Feather happens to have four toughness, so you can just get Fiery Gambit back. If you flip uh, two head or uh, three heads, you get to deal six damage to each opponent. If you get more than three flips, you draw nine cards and untap all lands you control. <laughs> <laughs> and then Aurelia's Fury is effectively a lock. So it, as long as you have four mana, you deal one damage to an opponent and to Feather or another creature you control that can survive it. And then that opponent that you targeted cannot cast non-creature spells on their turn. <laughs> this is all ridiculous, is what this is. Yeah, it's great. It's ridiculous. I say we just burn it down. Yeah, let's burn it down. <laughs> Which is the other slide that we have here. So there's a bunch of red Yay, creatures. Gutter snipe. There's a bunch of creatures that deal damage when you cast spells. Uh, gutter snipe being one of the most important. And then Balefire Leash is interesting because it's a lord which gives all of all your red creatures plus one plus one and your white creatures plus one plus one. And whenever you cast a red field or red spell, it deals three damage. And whenever you cast a white spell, you gain three life. So it's doing double duty. Uh, and then Firebrand Archer and Electrostatic Field are effectively the same card that just deal a damage whenever you cast a non-creature spell. So it's ridiculous. Lots of damage. So, for just so what you're cards. telling me is not only are you just casting the same spells over and over again, but you're dealing damage to me every time you're casting those spells. Yeah. It's great. Great for who? Great for you? Yeah. Ridiculous. This is ridiculous. That way, that's the way I try to kill everyone at once. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, Feather also kind of facilitates the heroic mechanic, which is an old mechanic from Theros that the creature did something when you targeted it with a spell or ability. Or a spell when you cast it. So I consider 10th District Legionnaire and Zada Hedron Grinder don't have heroic, but they might as well. Uh... So they're kind of in the section. Um, 10th District gets bigger and then scries you one. Phalanx Leader pumps all of your guys. Uh, Annex and Siamid pumps all of your guys till end of turn and gives them trample. Uh, Tethmos High Priest gets creatures back from the graveyard. Zada copies spells and a crow and conscriptor is really cool. When you target it with a uh, spell, it gains co you gain control of another target creature until end of turn, and then you untap that creature and it gains haste. So it's like, that's a cool Niv-Mizzet you got. I'm going to take control of it and punch you with it. Why would you punch me with my own equipment? That's just mean, Kenny. It's <laughs> for commander like damage. It's only like we're playing commander. <laughs> it's a casual format, everyone. Yeah. Just this grow your guys. This was supposed to be a fun game of casual commander. <laughs> yeah. I, I really like being able to, to facilitate a mechanic that has gone kind of forgotten by the commander. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I love the Theros block. I think I think it was a cool idea it, yeah. artistically well it's just greek mythology which is really cool don't get me wrong i love greek mythology but yeah i mean it's, it's greek mythology who doesn't love it yeah so 
you know. Oedipus Rex. No, I just moving yeah. on. Anyway, <laughs> we're not going to go into Oedipus stuff. Um, I did find out there were a bunch of token producers in red white that care about instants and sorceries. Young Pyromancer, Monastery Men are the best, mentor. and Goblin Slide are the best out of the three of them. Uh, Young Pyromancer is one of the best red cards printed in an uncommon slot ever. Yeah, I love yes. it in my, my um, cast deck. Akron Crusader and Vanguard of Brimaz are both heroic spells, but they're here because they create creatures. Uh, Her- Vanguard of Brimaz's creatures have Vigilance, and then Akron Crusaders have Haste. Monastery Menors have Prowess, which means they get bigger whenever you cast a non-creature spell. And then Goblin Slide also produces uh, creatures with haste whenever you pay an extra one when you cast an instant sorcery. Yeah, that's uh, pretty nuts. So you can go super wide and then pump them with, like, uh, Phalanx Leader. Because that's what I needed your deck to do. Go super wide <laughs> and smashy. <laughs> Shocking the Boros would build I, an army and hit you with it. I just like having the option open. It's a good option to have open. I like this deck a lot. I might build this. Yeah, this, this is a really cool... I, I like this deck. Now, this, this I... next section <laughs> has got me scratching my head. Oh, Boros Control. Yeah! So... <laughs> <laughs> because we can do that now! <laughs> so, turns out there are two counter spells in white. The one I put up here is called Dawn Charm. It's a fog and a counter spell. So you can do that. Um, Eerie Interlude technically targets a creature you control, so you can... Um, get it back on your end step after your creatures come back into play and just keep reusing it when they target your stuff and maybe maybe possibly abuse enter the battlefield abilities <laughs> uh fell the mighty is a sweeper so for five mana you destroy all creatures with power greater than target creatures power so you just target feather and blow everything up that's bigger than it and chandra's ignition does the same thing to creatures that are smaller uh shelter uh target creature you control gains protection from a color of your choice similar to um uh, what, what was it that was up above it? I forget the name now. Kenny. <laughs> um, but it, it falls under that same line, and then it also draws you a card, so it cantrips you into other stuff. <sighs> Kenny! <laughs> Alright, so, what I'm still seeing, for the most part, is, is you built a Boros deck. Yeah. That does Boros things, except spell slingers. Trickier, yeah. I totally want to build this deck now. <laughs> Lots of instants and sorceries that do cool stuff. I love yeah. Spellslinger decks. Over and over again. Yay, That's, Spellslinger. Yeah. Anything uh, else notable that you, you want to throw in there? Uh, there was a lot of choices, and I was really surprised with the budget on the deck. A lot of the cards that I want to run are like 50 cent commons or, or like 10 cent commons, just because they cantrip... So they draw you a card when you use them, and then you just get them back to draw more cards. Yeah, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I yeah, once again, I, I still am fairly in my stance that it's Boros is now one and a half notes. No, although I do think that this notes. deck is very interesting. Um, it, it's got a lot of facets to it. Like, you can do the, the control... Control with very large parentheses around it. With very it. large parentheses yeah. around it. Uh, but you have the control elements in there. Everything you're doing is potentially producing you more dudes, bigger armies that do more things. So it's <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, it has the it's ability cool. to turn into a really cool uh, snowball effect. Of course it does. After turn, like, ideally to. Ideally, <laughs> I feel like ideally anything happens in turn one or two. It's not quite how the world works. Well, you just but need, ideally, you need one rock that produces a color, and then you just play feather on turn two. Yay! <laughs> That's what we needed a turn two commander. And I mean, there's four cards like another X. turn two commander. Yeah, there's like four, four to it's eight. It's a cards. casual format, everybody. There's 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 four to eight cards like expedite, which is a one mana spell that does a thing and draws you a card. So they're in there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're ready to move on? Yeah. All right. So it's Haley's turn. <sighs> Niv Visit Reborn. So play all the gold things. Play all of the gold things. Well, I took kind of a different approach to Niv Visit than I think most people would from the set. Um, I kind of wanted to keep the flavor of the set, so I chose to build Niv Visit Super Friends. Uh, I run about 30 Planeswalkers in the deck, and 40% of the deck is able to be hit and synergizes with uh, Niv-Mizzet's ability. 
that says when he enters the battlefield, you uh, get to reveal the top 10 cards of your library. And for each color pair, I get to choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. And then put the chosen card on uh, into my hand. Chosen cards into my hand. Yeah. And then the rest to the bottom of my library in a random order. So, having 40% of my deck do that gives me, every time I cast him, about... Ideally four cards. About I, ideally four cards, if I'm lucky more. But ideally I get four cards every time I play him. He's a value, he's a 6-6 six, six flyer. Uh, he's one of those things where it's like you, you have to kill him because that commander damage can add up really fast. But you also don't want to kill him because if I play him again then I just get cards. Interesting so, trap you have set up for people with him. So it's interesting. Uh, Kenny's deck is kind of more straightforward, where mine is a little bit more of like a setup, payoff, janky, fun, flavorful type thing going on. Um, and something to note is like we we did build these decks kind of like at middle of the road costs. Yeah. So they're not as powerful as they could be made and that's where the fun lies like we're not both running like thousand dollar mana bases no so so this deck gets <laughs> real fun and real janky that it, makes me cry i don't want to pay a thousand dollars for mana you don't have to that's why we <laughs> that's, made that's these why we the way I know. <laughs> so we're gonna get started off with niv mizzet with some of the engines in the deck and by engines i mean we have uh cascading and proliferating um, as main producers for the deck, so we run cards like uh, Inexorable Tide and uh, that proliferates every time I cast a spell. Uh, Evolution says says whenever a band, bleh, sorry, a land enters the battlefield under my control, I get to proliferate. That just ensures that my walkers have plenty of loyalty to, loyalty to loyalty. do whatever loyalty. I want to do. <laughs> I can speak English, I promise. <laughs> uh, and then Cascade is a huge thing in the deck because Cascade allows you to uh, play more cards for free. So Cascade says when you uh, play a spell, you exile cards or you remove cards from the top of your library until you hit a card that is uh, one card, less, right? a non-land card that is one that less is... than the converted mana cost. I think it's just less. Of the card. Just less. Like, yeah. Oh, they cost less. Yep. Okay, so cost one less still works. Yeah. One or one so anything that, anything that costs less than the, the card you cascaded with, you can play it without paying its mana cost. And then you put the removed cards on the bottom in a random order. So I run cards like uh, Maelstrom Wander, uh, which when he comes in he double cascades. Yidris is a creature that whenever he deals damage to a player, all of my spells gain cascade for the rest of the turn. And then Maelstrom Nexus is an enchantment that says the first spell uh, I play each turn has Cascade, and that does count for my opponent's turns as well, yep. which makes interactions super fun. Yeah, I'm so happy that you're including Peer here, because I remember oh. when you thought he wasn't a good card. Okay, so Peer, imagine if <laughs> Rascal is a creature that he says when uh, one or more counters would be put on a permanent, uh, my team controls, uh, my team meaning me in this scenario, uh, that many plus uh, one of each kind of those counters are put in that permanent instead. So, for example, if I activate a plus one loyalty ability on a Planeswalker, it gets two counters instead. Yeah. It is super good. I think you can see how these all synergize. We roll in. Um, some other important things within the deck. Uh, you've got uh, the Contagion Engine. That's kind of like... Another engine part of the deck, I say, yeah. and it's also kind of a board wipe. So Contagion in, uh, enters the battlefield, puts plus one or minus one, minus one counters on each creature target player controls. Uh, if I pay for it and tap it, I can proliferate twice. So they've it's, got minus one, yeah. minus one counters. I'm constantly putting minus one, minus one counters yeah. on their stuff. I'm adding loyalty to my stuff. I'm putting counters on my creatures. Or if I have counters on my creatures, I can put more counters on my creatures. So it's just continuously giving me value. Um, obviously, Oath of Teferi is... Which can also flicker Contagion Engine to do it again. Which can also flicker Contagion Engine to do it again. It allows me to activate Planeswalker's abilities more than once per turn. And then, the combo of the deck is the Chain Veil and Teferi Temporal Archmage. Those two work so well together, because if I have them... It's really good. Yeah. And any sort of proliferating engine on the field... I just keep untapping my lands and tapping the Chain Veil. The Chain Veil allows me to activate Planeswalker's abilities uh, in that turn as though they hadn't been time, yeah. activated at all. 
Oh my god. So I basically <laughs> just keep on tapping and do Planeswalker things until I either win the game or uh, I'm about to win the game. Yeah. So uh, one notable thing, though, that sometimes people confuse, uh, Oath and Teferi the chain, in the chain veil. If you have Oath of Teferi on the field, you can use Planeswalker abilities twice. The wording on the chain veil says if, as though they had not been uh, activated at all this turn. It doesn't allow you to activate them two additional times because of Oath of Teferi. It just allows you to activate them one more additional time. Yeah. For each time you tap it and untap it and cycle it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, in order to protect my many planeswalkers, uh, we are board wipe city in this deck. You have got... Uh, all of the color combos basically have some form of board wipe, and we just kind of took the best ones. Um, Sounds about right. Each board wipe is sort of flavorful to the guild, or the color combination that it comes from. Uh, for example, Savage Twister, it's a girl spell, which you'll notice that if you look at the deck list later, there's not a ton of girl spells in here. Girl doesn't play nice with things that aren't creatures or big smashy things. <laughs> They just, girl just does what girl does. Um, but you've got they, Savage they like Twister, where you pay X into it and it deals X damage to each creature. Uh, time Wipe returns something to my hand. I get to return a creature to my hand and destroy all other creatures. Kaya's Wrath. And Supreme just, Verdict that yeah. destroys everything and can't be countered. Pernicious D, that's an enchantment that allows me to pay X and sacrifice it and destroy each artifact creature and enchantment with converted mana cost X or less at will. Dodges Planeswalkers, yeah. Dodges Planeswalkers, which is good for me. Uh, and then, obviously, we're running blue, so we have to run Cyclonic Rift. That's mm -hmm. just a given. Uh, and I think there's like three or four more board wipe things in here, uh, but for the sake of time, they all destroy things. I think we understand how board wipes work, but I gotta be able to protect my stuff. Yeah. And that is the important part here. Um, deck also runs a lot of single target things uh, and counter spells to once again help protect my stuff um here, teferi here of dominaria the planeswalker uh if you get his final off and get that emblem he says whenever you draw a card exile target permanent and opponent controls so he's getting rid of something every time i'm drawing which is a lot uh you've got venser who his emblem says whenever you cast a spell you get to exile target permanent so i draw i exile something i cast a spell i exile something you see yeah, what I'm see doing what here. Doing. Um, and then you uh, have Assassin's Trophy as well in the Golgari colors. It destroys target permanent opponent controls, and its controller may search their la uh, library for a basic land card, put a battlefield, and shuffle their library. So I've got a lot of single target stuff in here where it's like if I don't have my board wipe or only one person is irritating me and it's not worth it to use a board wipe yet, I can just single that guy out. Uh, yeah. A lot of planeswalkers have some form of spot removal as well. A lot of them do, yes. Very, very versatile those planeswalkers are. There's a reason they're my favorite cards. Um, <laughs> and then you've got uh, counter spells like Render Silent. Uh, it is an instant that says counter target spell. Its controller can't cast spells this turn. I run this over some other counter spells because obviously... I say no, and then you're just kind of done for the turn. Yeah. Unless you want to attack me, which is fine. I'll just board wipe you. Yeah. Uh, and then I also run my favorite counter spell, Perplex. Which is rude. Very <laughs> underrated card. So underrated card. This card is so good. It counters a target spell unless controller discards their hand. And there are two instances in which this spell is very good. You have seven cards in hand. How badly do you want to cast that spell right now? Yeah. Are you willing to sacrifice your entire game plan for that one particular card? Alternatively, you have no hand. Guess what you can't do? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the transmutability is not to be overlooked because you, you can pull an oath with that, can't you? No, you can't. can't. You, you can pull. Yeah, you can pull stuff though. I mean, I can pull the Savage Twister in, in out of Yuriko, there if I need a board wipe. Yeah. yeah in Yuriko, I pull Arcane Adaptation with it all the time, and that's just like, I win. Have a nice day. Yeah, the transmutability says that if you pay, uh, at least on Perplex specifically, it's uh, one colorless, one black, one blue. I get to look, th uh, discard it, look through my deck, uh, and I get to search my library for a card uh, with. 
the same converted mana cost or less, but it's my hand. Mm -hmm. right. can only do that at the same time as a sorcery. I don't care, though. It's a tutor. Because, yeah, it's a tutor. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I need a board wipe. There's my Savage Twister. I need some sort of mana fixing. I can go find Oath of Nyssa. That I believe I it also finds Psych Rift if you need it. It yeah. does also find Psych Rift. Find Cyclonic Rift. With it. it does find Psych Rift as well. So there's a lot of things that it's like, if I, if I desperately need something, yeah. I yeah. got it. Or if I desperately need to not see something, then I, I think got it's it. honestly one of the most underrated cards in Magic. So. My favorite counter spell, hands down. Yeah. Uh, but this deck also has some nifty tricks that I like to play. Um, for example, Assemble the Legion. Uh, it is an enchantment that says at the beginning of my upkeep, I get a muster counter, and then I get to put a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token with haste onto the battlefield for each counter on it. I can proliferate that like nobody's business. So it's like, <laughs> oh, it's my turn. Upkeep, make 64 dudes that are now swinging at your face. Yeah. Or, in worst case scenario, defending me. Mm -hmm. And something that synergizes well with it that I play in the deck as well is Aura Shards, uh, which is an enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under my control, I, can or I may destroy a target artifact or enchantment. So... Any artifacts or enchantments that I don't like on the board, especially if I've got Assemble the Legion, that's just gone. <laughs> Bye. Have a nice day. I believe there are also 12 of the Planeswalkers in this deck produce tokens uh, on top of the measly seven creatures that this deck runs because Planeswalkers are the most important part here. Uh, so there are lots of ways to get some sort of creature on the board to remove something. Um, I'm really excited you're running Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Oh, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth is a star. I can return all legendary permanent cards from my graveyard to the battlefield, so long as I have another legendary permanent on the thing, on the field, uh, on the thing. Yes, <laughs> on the thing? On the thing. On the, thing. On the field. I forgot what a field was called for a second. But uh, this gets all Planeswalkers back. So yeah, they're all every, every Planeswalker is legendary. Oh my god. So this is just <laughs> recursion. Um, yeah. I just recur all of the Planeswalkers out of my graveyard. Some of the creatures. It's like, pretty good, yeah. This is this is just uh, my version of Rise of the Dark Realms, which gets all creatures yep. from all graveyards back to the battlefield. I only hit my graveyard, but I really only care about my graveyard, I think. Yeah. And then something else nifty that this deck does... Uh, I run Limdahl's Vault and Congression at Dawn, both of which will allow me to stack my deck for Niv-Mizzet. So yeah. you go to cast Niv-Mizzet with the ability on the stack, I can rearrange everything that I'm about to draw so I can maximize my draw power for when he hits the field. They're also both at instant speed, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, while the ability's still on the stack, I can go through and rearrange. Uh, Congregation at Dawn gets me up to three creature cards so I can put... Three of my, you know, seven creatures on the top and make them useful. Or Limdol's Vault allows me to just keep finding cards until I'm happy with what I get. Or, you know, somewhat, you know, not upset about the cards that I'm about to get. Yeah, not five lands like usual. Um, yeah, not five <laughs> lands. Anything but five lands, please. <laughs> Can't ten, tell you how many times ten I have whiffed on that. Ten, ten loops of Limdol's Vault later, still five lands. Yeah! So five <laughs> lands. We'll just get rid of the land pocket. Everything's great. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, the most important part of this deck, Planeswalkers. Uh, we're only going to go over a couple, because Planeswalkers can get long and tireless to explain. Uh, but the big, big ones here that we want to cover, uh, Sark on the Masterless. He's an alternate win condition for the deck, because he turns all of my Planeswalkers into 4-4 four, four dragons he with does, flying. Yeah. So it's like, that's cool. I've got this board of, you know, 15 planeswalkers out there. Now they're all 4-4 four, four flyers swinging directly at your face. Do you wish to concede? Yep. Sarkin's really good. Yeah. And his static ability <laughs> works too, because this is whenever a creature attacks you or planeswalker you control, it deals one damage to that creature. Each Not dragon, yeah. Not super effective. Well, he also makes dragon tokens. He so. does make dragon tokens. And he makes 4-4 four, four tokens for a plus one, which is really good. Yeah. Well, he makes... It's minus three makes 4-4 four, four tokens, and then his plus one makes all, oh, of, you're your, right. all of your creatures dragons. So, or all of your planeswalkers dragons. My bad. 
Uh, so he's just a good alternate wing con. You just kind of windmill slam him, plus one him, and, and swing for a ton. Yeah. Uh, another new Planeswalker. Um, I, there's quite a few new Planeswalkers in this deck, actually, because I wanted to highlight the War of the Spark Planeswalkers. Um, Kazmina. You couldn't tell. We've been geeking out about Kazmina. We've been geeking out about Kazmina. She's so good. Uh, Spells your opponent's cast that target a creature or planeswalker control cost two more to cast. So she is additional protection for my planeswalkers because if you're trying to single remove any of them, you'd have to pay two additional mana to do so. And that is taxing your mana. And everybody knows that taxing your mana is very taxing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other things, uh, Bolus God Pharaoh. God Pharaoh is another instance of a board wipe when you pull his uh, minus 12 off. Yeah, each but, non-land permanent, exile each non-land permanent your opponent's control. Yeah, exile each non-land permanent your opponent's control. <sighs> Buy all your stuff. It was nice knowing you. But in addition to that, his plus abilities, both of his plus, his plus one and his plus two. Extraordinary. It's so good. Yeah. You, you can control your opponent's hand. Or additionally, you just rip stuff off the top of your deck to play for yourself, or off the top of their deck to play for yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's off the top of your opponent's library. Yeah, so I'm benefiting from whatever nasty stuff you put in your deck. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that one. <laughs> um, and then I couldn't resist putting Dragon God in here, Nico Bolas from the new set. His static ability is so good. <laughs> Only once per turn, but it's still really good. It's only once per... Well, twice if I've got the Teferi out there. Or more. <laughs> or more if I've got my combo out there. Yeah. But it's, it's so good because if I... I can use his abilities, which in of themselves are good. Uh, like, I can draw a card and each opponent exiles a card from their hand. Uh, or, or a permanent, permanent they control. Yeah. He destroys creatures and planeswalkers. Or he just straight up makes people lose the game. But additionally, if I'm in a tight spot and and I need another instance of anything, really, um, I need another piece of removal, I need to draw another card, I need to uh, make another token as a blocker. Yeah, you can just do that, can uh, you? I can, yeah, I can just do that because he's my backup buddy. Um, then uh, another older one, a Johnny and Yielding. He synergizes so well with Planeswalkers even though he is a Planeswalker himself. Um, his plus two allows me to get cards. Um, he just fills my hand. He exiles some uh, a creature that's bothering me on the field. Or I can put uh, five plus one plus one counters on each creature I control and five loyalty counters on each Planeswalker I control. Yes. Which yeah. is... I actually played a Johnny Unyielding in Standard. Yeah, he's really good. That's That's five instances of proliferating in one swing yeah it's it's really good he provides so much value um and then liliana dread horde general she says uh whenever creatures i control dies i get to draw a card she makes creatures she makes people get rid of creatures their own creatures that is and yeah. then she also she's got a board one-sided wipes. sweep she's got a one-sided sweep so she does everything you want her to do and she's especially good when I've got my token generating engine, like yeah. the couple token generators that I have out there, because if I'm losing them, I'm drawing cards because of it. I'm going to find my answer. You're going to lose. It's going to be so satisfying. Absolutely. For me. Um, and then uh, last thing I want to talk about was the land base a little bit for this deck. Uh, it's five colors, so land bases are kind hard. of hard and kind of hard to do budget. <laughs> When you're doing yeah. five colors. Um, alternatively, you can just throw a bunch of dual lands in there because everybody knows this is the best. But you will be spending an insane amount of money on that. If yeah, you're so. it's like at least 2000 bucks for 10 dual lands. Yeah, if you're averaging about $200 per dual land. Uh, I'd almost argue a little bit more, but yes. <laughs> um, two notable lands that came out in the new War of the Spark set that synergize well with Planeswalkers are Karn's Bastion and Interplanar Beacon. Uh, Karn's Land allows me to pay for, tap it, and to proliferate, so it's just another proliferating engine for the deck. Value, Interplanar Beacon, uh, says whenever I cast a Planeswalker spell, I gain a life, it taps for colors, or I can pay one and tap it to add two mana of different colors, and I can use that to cast Planeswalker spells. 
So it just gives me my color fixation in a five color deck. Um, additionally, it plays all of the uh, tra the sorry tap trilands. So all of the the ones that enter the battlefield tapped and tap for one of each three color combination. Uh, I play the full or sorry I play nine out of the ten uh, bounce lands. The bounce lands add, they enter the battlefield tapped. You bounce the land back to your hand and then it taps to add a two color combination of mana. The only one I don't play is Gruel because once again Gruel doesn't, Gruel doesn't nice, work yeah. well <laughs> work nice with other things. So you don't need as much red green mana going into the thing. And then I play the set of temples as well. Because although they enter the battlefield tapped, they do allow you to scry, which gives you some sort of advantage in that aspect. So land base is a little bit slower, but once this starts rolling, it rolls. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, you know, not not as consistent as maybe Feather is, but certainly I think more fun. I don't know. Feather's, For me. Feather's pretty fun. It requires a lot of skill to pilot, that's for sure. Like, for me. It's a little... Uh, it's not super skill intensive. It's just <laughs> lots of planeswalkers. They do lots of things on all the turns. Yeah. Uh, planeswalkers in general are just value engines, in my opinion. So the fact that I get to put so many of them in one deck just makes me happy. I don't know. I like spamming sweepers. That don't hurt me. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> what I don't play creatures. I don't care if I destroy all creatures. That's fair. <laughs> uh, what about some other commanders we found interesting? So, uh, I am a big fan of Kefnet. Uh, he's kind of everything Mono Blue wants out of. Just a general commander if you want to play good blue stuff. He lets you... He's a resilient threat. He's going to come back to your... Uh, no matter where he goes, he's going to come back to the top of your library somehow. Uh, he lets you double your spells, so if you're drawing cards... You get to do more of that. If you're bouncing creatures, you get to do more of that. It's really cool. Uh, and then there's so many ways for Blue to manipulate the top deck with cards like Soothsaying and Sensei's Divining Top that you can just pick the card you want to double. Yeah, I think that uh, Kefnet is stupid. <laughs> he's, he's so good. Uh, it just gives you basically almost everything that Blue wants to do. The only thing that he doesn't support super well is the fact that you are drawing uh, a lot. Uh, so the fact that you can reveal an instant sorcery and then copy that card is good because you're using that spell twice, you get that advantage, but it only happens on your first draw step as opposed to, I drew 10 cards this turn, guess what I get to do with those 10 cards? Yeah, but if he was able to do that, he'd be broken. He would be super broken, are you kidding me? Yeah. But then, keep in mind, you do still have to pay for the copy of the card. It just costs two less to cast. Yeah. Right. So maybe it is better that you can't do it on every card you play? Yeah. And, I mean, he is a four-power flyer, which is kind of a clock in commander. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a four-five flyer for a four-drop. That's really good. And as a four-drop, uh, as a commander, you get to cast him more. All of the times, yeah. Yeah, you get to cast him a lot more, which makes him a lot more useful, as like, opposed to, like, Progenitus. Could you imagine costs 10 doubling... mana, two of each color, and it's very, very hard to cast. Could you imagine doubling High Tide with this thing? For the viewers at home, remember oh, I'm sorry. doubling High, high Tide is. High Tide is an inst or is a instant in blue that lets you double the amount of mana your islands add. So instead of adding one, they would add two... Oh, an additional one. And instead of adding two, they would add three. So you could be like, I flipped over High Tide off the top of my library. Cool, I'm going to cast it. And then I'll do it again. So now you're producing three mana per land off of one card. Yeah, this is... It's it's just good. <laughs> and in addition, let's not forget, God Eternal Kefnet, as well as the other God Eternals from War of the Spark, have the ability that says when it dies... It's put into exile from the battlefield. Uh, you may put it to the owner's library, third from the top instead. Um, that's not really good in Commander. That is really good in Commander. Third from the top of the library? In your, blue, it's fine. Your Commander can't go to your library? Yeah, can. can. You can choose to. Yeah. You can choose You to. always could. I thought there was a zone that your Commander couldn't go to. Nope. You know, she should let it go to the library. Well, if that's the case, then that's better because it just doesn't go away. Yeah. You cast it and you just recast Guess it. Guess who's back. Yeah, so you just dodge commander attacks, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, Robolesque. 
I think this is another good legendary creature to build around because he just does everything that Simic counters kind of wants to do. He does a lot of different things, yeah. Yeah, and he himself, much like uh, Niv Mizzet, is a value engine within and of itself. It is a five drop, four five flying with trample. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, you put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, and when he dies, you proliferate and then proliferate again. So he's another one of those like. Do I kill him because he gets really big, mean, and out of control and deal commander tax or <laughs> deals commander damage really quickly? Or uh, do I not kill him because if I kill him, then you get to proliferate, proliferate again, then recast him, put two more plus one you counters on something, and continue the cycle of madness? You know what else is a really cool idea? Hmm. Putting him in a clone's deck. You could put him in a clone's deck, clone him, let the clone die. Clone him again. Let the clone die. Yeah, if you just keep oh, making clones, of, you just keep <laughs> making clones of him to proliferate all the stuff. Mean, yeah, yeah, he he produce he can produce up to like limitless <laughs> plus one plus one counters. You just so, keep making it so he kills himself and yeah, and do right. it again and then so proliferate for totally everything. Totally new players. You can't have two legendary creatures of the same name on the battlefield. Correct. So he dies instantly so you proliferate then prolifer proliferate yeah the etb again. happens and then he dies yeah yeah so he, so he enters you put two plus plus one plus one plus one plus one counters on that's things, just disgusting and then legendary rule takes effect yeah just He's gone again <laughs> progenitor mimic targeting role-esque yeah make a copy of progenitor mimic let it die <laughs> proliferate 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 so this oh. is he just makes <laughs> the biggest and stompiest things. You play all the things that gets plus one plus yeah. one counters. You get to draw stuff. You can actually pump the first roll esque with the second one if you let the second one die. You could. And he has trample. Yeah, he's a flying and trample. And he's got trample. Like I said, this guy gets out of control fast. You're putting counters <laughs> on everything. You're drawing everything. You're swinging everything. And if everything dies, that's okay because then you just do it all again. Yeah. So you can play creatures like. Uh, you could play Mowu! Yeah, you he could. He gets additional plus one plus one counters. You could play stuff like Peer because he still benefits from the plus yeah. one. Like, everything that gets plus one plus one counters gets an additional Absolutely. counter of that type. So Cards like Harden Scales, stuff like that. Harden Scales, which is an enchantment that adds an additional plus one plus one counter. You could play his imaginary friend, too. Toothy. Yeah, Stompy. Or, you, uh, could play, you could play Toothy. So, uh, yeah, Toothy combo. draws a bunch of cards. It draws you yeah. cards, yeah. Any of the stuff that draws you cards with counters... Any of the stuff that adds extra counters. You don't care if your board dies because this just keeps building big and tall and does nasty things. Yeah. Nasty, nasty things. Oh, that's a cool commander, I gotta say. Yes. Uh, what's next? Oh, Catra. Oh, Catra. Uh, so, Kenny, so, I have a question for you really quick. Huh? What is it with you and picking all the God Eternals? They're really cool and they don't go away. Having a commander that lets you dodge command ta commander tax is really, really good. Much like Yuriko. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't build Those of you who don't know what Yuriko does, she has commander ninjutsu. It says instead of paying her converted mana cost, you can pay the ninjutsu cost and put her in place of a uh, unblocked creature that is attacking. And so she just automatically connects and deals a ton of damage and she dodges commander tax like nobody's business because commander ninjutsu does not get commander taxed yeah, yeah. and for those of you who are wondering i'm the one that plays yuriko <laughs> yeah, i like... do have a version of yuriko <laughs> cards cards like yuriko and derevi are really really good for that specific reason yuriko yeah. does something similar just you just pay four mana instead of uh, I, I just two love this. and it doesn't care about the creature swinging I just love the style of the God Eternals because I love the Amon Ket and I just yeah. the, like I feel so terrible that they're eternalized. But <laughs> you know? I I think this card is really cool for Mono White. Yeah, it's just a resilient creature, so you're not really too worried mm -hmm. about it dying. It just comes back. It's, a it's got a big fat butt too. on it. It is a three six double strike, so it it's hits got like a, it's truck. got a big fat butt, so it deals or dodges a bunch of uh, things or a bunch yeah. of removal spells or at least damage based removal spells whenever you cast a creature spell you get to create a 4-4 black zombie a four, warrior 4-4 is a very vigilance. large creature yeah 4-4 four, four is token. nothing to like stick your nose up at so you're playing a creature and then you're getting uh, another really big creature so it's like I'm just gonna play a bunch of one drop one ones and get a bunch of 4-4s yeah, four so white has a whole bunch of really efficient cheap creatures you're playing white weenies is what you're playing you're absolutely playing I am or at least absolutely you playing white weenies and if weenies. you're not you're entitled to your wrong opinion. <laughs> I'm absolutely playing white weenies with a token sub theme because cards like Anointed Procession exist. 
What do you guys yes. mean by all the anthems? So anthems are an ability that add plus one plus one to each creature you control. Oh, okay. Yeah, right? yeah an anthem is and, anything that does that. And, so, yeah. and that is uh, one of the main abilities banner. in White's Color Pie. So if you get a whole bunch of anthems, your four fours and your God Eternal or Catcher are suddenly five five six six seven sevens eight eights, and they're just there. You and get to every time swing you cast, with them. Yeah. Every time you cast that White Weenie. Here's another, you get six, another one. Six black zombie warrior. Yeah, you can play all the anthems in here, so the stuff that buffs all your creatures. You can play the specific ones, like Vanquisher's Banner, and cast something like calls like zombies out because you're going to be casting a bunch of yeah. small, efficient white creatures to get the four, four black zombies that are just it's so stupid, <laughs> so stupid. You can do yeah, cards, white cards like glorious out of anthem, control. Um, honor of the pure. Which I can't do, figure out my favorite god eternal. Which are is. both give plus one plus one uh, glorious anthem to all creatures and honor of the pure to only white creatures, but yeah. it's still fine. Uh, you're still giving god eternal Aketra another point of power, which is two points of power during combat. Yeah, and then like you said too, you can play stuff like Anoda Procession, which gives you an additional four four. Yeah, four four. So it's like I'm gonna cast this one drop one one. Here's two four fours. And you know what's really fun? White's got a whole bunch of reanimation abilities. It's the only one other than Black that does it, and Black does it just a little bit better. For those of you who are listening to the audio-only version of this podcast, I'm currently, like... She's she's uh, she's shaking her I'm head. I'm shaking in my shame. head in, in disappointment at Kenny and his antics. So there are cards <laughs> like uh, uh, Ameria the Sky Ruin, which is a land that says whenever you have six or more planes in play, each upkeep, you get a creature from your graveyard into play. Yeah, so, it's kind of uh, good. So I mean, this is really mono white, good. so you have a whole bunch of planes, right? Mm-hmm. And you just get those creatures back. There's also cards like Shepherd of Ameria, which does it when you play a land, if any land, and if you have a planes in play, it goes into play instead of into your hand. Ameria Shepherd, Ameria Shepherd. Shepherd of Ameria, Ameria Shepherd. Sorry, and then cards like Ray of Dawnbringer, which does the same thing as uh, um, <laughs> Ameria the Sky Ruin. Uh, yeah, this is white is super efficient at making armies. <laughs> and this just builds the worst army. <laughs> it so just stupid. gets really oh wide, really, really fast. Oh god, and literally, huge. it's the god eternal. <laughs> Alternatively, too, you also have stuff like Oketra's Monument. That's yeah. whenever you cast a creature spell, you make yep. a one-one. And the first Oketra, which and which the first cares Oketra, about other creatures, which cares about other creatures, and makes one-one and tokens. And you can play stuff like Divine Visitation. Or is this Divine Visitation that makes the 4 4s? It is, yeah. 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 So you yeah. play stuff like Divine Visitation. Which makes 4 4 Vigilant makes Flyers. 4 4 Vigilant Flyers every time a token would enter the battlefield. It enters as yeah. that instead. Cards so like Resplendent just... Angel. That's, uh, that's a cute 1 1 I just made. How would you like it if it was a 4 4 flyer? Yeah. It's great. Bet you'd love it a lot more, wouldn't you? Oh. <laughs> this uh. is why I play stuff like Pernicious Deed, because it's like, oh, that's nice. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sacrifice it everything with convertible and it costs zero or less goes away. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you just lost all 47 of your tokens. Yeah. Darn. But that's a lot of four four flyers. I'm not taking damage from anymore. That's true. <laughs> a lot of four four zombies. I'm not taking damage from anymore. But you have to, you do have to have that card to play it. Did you see board wipe city and Nick Mizzic, right? <laughs> Well, that's the We're point of tokens. We're talking like ten to twelve board wipes. I don't care about your token. That's the point of tokens. You just yeah. easily rebuild. But being Fast able to make super aggro, being <laughs> being the having the ability to create creatures when you cast creatures just allows you to devote less resources to the board, which is way harder on decks that rely on sweepers. That's fair. Especially when the creature that they're trying to get rid of just comes back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on from the monocolored decks, because in case you couldn't tell, I have a thing for not liking monocolored decks. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, here's a. a monocolored decks are very easy to stop with one card Iona. Iona. Iona says, I name a color. My opponents can't cast cards of that color. You've got a marble colored deck. Sucks to be you. Hope you got yeah. a spine of ish sign there, because it's all you got. <laughs> there are a couple, couple cards that things. goes around it. I or just... all is dust or something. Yeah, that's why you run. Uh, you usually run in monocolor. You run some colorless stuff to deal with. I also situation. find monocolored stuff Excuse me. difficult to deal with in the sense that, like, if I'm building a monocolored deck, there are some cards that, like. That's your only answer. So, like, example, white has, what, two counter spells total? Only two, yeah. Only two. You know that what I, I can't of. do in white? 
counter things that I don't like. That that leaves me wide open to so many things. Uh, I feel like a lot of the monocolored decks do that because there's stuff that they may only have one card that deals with the other stuff. So I prefer decks that deal with multiple things at once. Well, I think when you build a monocolored And that was deck, hard to do in this set too because there's yeah. only five multicolored legendary creatures in this yeah. set. I wanted to... I, I think the, the God Eternals are really solid commanders just because they're resilient enough to not really care about all the sweepers that take place in commander. They are. Uh, but you know what I, I like that's <laughs> also resilient? Store of Reanimator! Yeah. He is a four <laughs> so drop. Cool. He is in the... Uh... I just blanked on the name of the guild for a Golgari. second. Golgari. Golgari. Oh, I don't you know and I knew that. that. <laughs> I, you know what? I blanked out for a second. Give me a break. He's okay. one colorless, two black, one green for a 5-4 trampler. And he says, whenever he deals damage, combat damage to a player or planeswalker, I get to return to my hand target creature or planeswalker card in the graveyard that did not get sent there this combat. Reanimator. So, yeah. Yes. It's just, it's just reanimator. He's so good. You know what I don't care about? Hmm. My stuff dying. You know why? Because I get it right back. <laughs> and I like the fact that he's a trampler too, because he kind of does the same thing that yeah, Idris he gets, does, where he it's like in. he's getting that combat damage in. Yeah. Because he tramples over. So, like, you want to chump block it? That's fine. It's still going to trample over and deal combat damage to you. Yeah. Or even if you've got, like, you block it with a 4 4. That one damage is all I need to get in there to reanimate my stuff. Yeah, if you have, if you happen, I mean, you're in black and green, so you obviously have a way to give him death touch, just give him death touch, and you just deal one crack in for four. I just four. deal one and crack in for four, because trample and death touch is a fun mechanic interaction. <laughs> uh, it's So it's incredibly hard to stop, because I don't care if my stuff dies, because I get all of my stuff back. Alternatively, I can run stuff like Pernacious Deed in Reanimators. Yeah. And it just keeps coming just keep back. back. Not with this commander, but obviously, if that's something that I'm continuously, if I'm continuously bringing back a card that I can just board wipe whenever I please, that makes the game not so fun for everybody else. Yeah, and it makes it super politicky, which I like political commander, and I know a lot of people don't, but I abuse the hell out of politics in commander. I think it's a very you... useful negotiation tool. You use it as a nuclear button. I do. She waits until you swing at her, and the first person that does dies. <laughs> is the sole target for everything Listen, she plays. Here's my thing: is if we're all playing on an even level, why'd you have to hit me? <laughs> I'm not doing nothing to nobody until somebody hits me, and then you die. Or alternatively, if your board gets out of control, we have to get your board back under control. But once your board back is back under control, I will leave you alone until you hit me. <laughs> then you're going to feel the wrath of God and not just the magic card. <laughs> the God Queen. The wrath of the God Queen. Has spoken. Um, alternatively, in this deck as well, it opens up to a lot of uh, zombie synergies because he himself is a zombie elf wizard. So that gives us lots of cool stuff to do with like... Those are very good, three very good creature types. Yes. Zombie, well, zombie elf wizard, yes. Elves are like the epitome of green creatures green little creatures yeah. green little creatures zombies are the epitome of black creatures and like, wizards out of our blue. wizards are just fun <laughs> out of, they're out of blue which is weird but we're gonna live with it but it opens up so many zombie synergies you're gonna build an unstoppable zombie army with liliana uh you're gonna have a zombie lord out there that you can just make all of the zombies and this that could be like a secondary win con yeah is to have the zombie strategy behind it so i think it opens up to a lot of cool building options and potential cool yeah i yeah store of is really cool i actually i may ha may or may not have forgot he existed while building decks or picking commanders that wanted to look over uh, but he is Kenny. He's a really cool card <laughs> Kenny There's only like 16 legendary creatures in this set How could you miss him? I was blinded by the awesomeness of the god eternals I'm sorry You just wanted the monocolored decks Yeah of That's course That's okay I went the exact opposite route of monocolored <laughs> And picked the five color well, legendary guy in the set Technically feather is two colors <laughs> Uh yeah So that was our little mini deck tech stuff yeah. that we had for you today. 
Uh, we hope you guys enjoy it. We will be posting the deck te- the deck lists for my feather build and Haley's Niv Mizzet build on our TC or on our uh, tapped out page. Yeah, on our tapped out page, we will be posting those. They will be in the description video of YouTube uh, when we- that goes up, and then additionally, we'll post it onto our Facebook page and Twitter, so you have the links, so you guys can check out the full deck lists and potentially build them if you want to. Yeah, and if you guys do build them. Uh, let us know how it turns out. Yeah, let us know how it turns out. Let us know what changes you made. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I'd love to see what you guys do with these decks. Because I think they're really cool. And I hope you think they're really cool, too. Same here. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, now, we're starting a new segment once a month called Magic Fundamentals 101. Yeah, listen, we're not exactly sold on the name, but you get the idea behind <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, Going over uh, how to play the game from the ground up basically yeah. for new players well so we want to as we talked about very very heavily last week if you tuned in uh how magic is a community and we all play magic together and we want to make it a better place for everyone so what we want to start doing to help uh you guys out is once a month we're going to be doing a fundamentals episode where we're going to be talking about stuff. It's going to be highly geared towards new players, but it's still really good yeah. refresher material for people who've been playing for a while. Um, it's also something to watch if you want to get into playing the game as well. Yeah, yeah. if you want to get into playing the game, or if you've uh, just started playing it recently, if you've been playing for like 10, 15 years, uh, we hope it offers you something. Uh, we'll be talking about um, deck types, formats, uh, yep. keywords. Throughout throughout our, our episodes. I think yeah, throughout our episodes. Mostly go over the basics uh, next week, though. Uh, next week, we will be talking about how the game slash a turn in the game works. Yeah. So we're going to be going over all of the different steps in a turn and breaking down the interactions between the different steps for you guys so you can get a full understanding Standing of when you should be reacting to stuff or how you can be reacting to stuff how a turn just works like can when can i play lands can i play a land in the middle of combat the of answer course. is no <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> don't tell him that you can't if that lands a creature please don't be like, like, like that don't, one. don't be a kenny don't be like that one <laughs> chris like farley kenny. Mo- you remember the chris farley movie where they're like uh, we trained him wrong intentionally as a joke. <laughs> you know, don't be that guy. Yeah, no. We promise we're going to give you correct information. No, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to uh, actually cor- uh, try to try to learn you some cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. but that's, we're next week we're going to be talking about how the turn works. And additionally, uh, if you are new player to Magic or there's other stuff that you want to know, uh, let us know if there's something you'd like to see in a future episode so we can make sure that we address it for you guys because we care. Yeah. yeah. Just let us know on our Twitter. <laughs> you can reach our Twitter at, at to combat. You can email us at move to combat podcast at gmail.com. And of course, you can catch us here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Twitch TV slash move to combat. If you liked our intro music, you can find that at soundcloud.com slash James Scheib. That's James S H A I E B. It features vocals from Ron Bylas, a local rapper. And also, uh, if you are interested in role-playing games, we have a sister podcast called Brave Yet Stupid. You can watch that on Saturdays at 6.30 at Twitch TV slash Brave Yet Stupid. We're currently playing the superhero role-playing game Aberrant, so if that sounds cool to you, please check that out. Anything else you guys want to say? Oh, Thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you guys. Definitely. And have a good night. See you later. Have a good one.